Hi, I'm Daniel Roth. I'm the executive editor of LinkedIn. Pleased to have with us today Sally Krawcheck, who's the chair of Elevate and is widely considered to be one of the most influential women on Wall Street. So let's talk about your most recent role. You are the, the chair of Elevate. Elevate used to be called 85 Broads. Before this, you've held some of the top jobs on Wall Street at many banks. Um, and I think that after Merrill, people assumed that you would then go and run some other massive bank. You took some time off to consider your options. What led you to decide to move into a professional network? Yeah, actually, and some people presumed I would go away. I remember sitting with a friend of mine and she said, why, why do you keep coming back? Um, and I said, well, I guess I'm a weeble. And uh, actually, I really love and enjoy business and have had a wonderful career and sort of think about each part of it as a different chapter. So I had that chapter uh, in my life and I loved it. But, you know, as I spent time in this during a career transition, really thinking about the financial crisis at which I had a front row seat and some of the causes of it, plenty of causes we've discussed, you know, not enough capital, not enough liquidity and so on. But it struck me given my experience and then given the research that I looked at that one of the great causes of the downturn was groupthink. That, you know, a bunch of folks, to my mind and from what I saw, very well-meaning, grew up together, looking at the same information over the course of years, vacationing together, talking together, and came to the same conclusions often right, in this case, very, very wrong. And so I began to think about diversity as being a driver to break the group think. Um, and researched it, looked at it, wrote on LinkedIn about it, as a matter of fact, as my thoughts were sort of gathering. And when the idea of an, a professional woman's network came along, I thought, hold on, that's interesting. When I did further research, and something you might appreciate, saw that networking has been cited as the number one unwritten rule of success in business. Groupthink, women, networking, the combination of it was so interesting to me that I thought, okay, here's, here's the next chapter of my career. You've written uh, a couple times about the idea of diversity on, on Wall Street. Not diversity inside Wall Street, which you say is important, but also diversity in investing. And I think one of, your, one of the interesting points that you made is that the baby boomers are pulling their money out of Wall Street. Right they're retiring. Millennials are putting their money in. And millennials actually want to invest in things that matter. And you recently launched a fund that invests, an index fund that invests in companies where, that, have an, a, uh, that over index in having women as directors and, uh, and, and on the board. Um, for so long, social impact investing has been seen as a nice to have, not a must have. Is this something that you're doing because, and do you think Wall Street should do it because it's good for return on investment? Is it a thing that you do to get money in? What, what's, the, what's the end goal? There's really a lot to it. So I think first of all, if, if you get to the issue of diversity in these companies and in senior management roles, the research I've reviewed shows that greater diversity of all kinds, but greater gender diversity in this instance, is associated with higher returns on equity, lower risk, lower volatility, greater long-term focus, greater client focus, greater innovation. One might argue it's you know, not yet as fully diverse as we, we would like to be. So that's point number one. Point number two as I began to look at, having spent so much of my career on Wall Street, um, you know, as I began to look at what the next generation of investors are looking for, millennials certainly, but a group that is significantly underinvested are women. And they also have the opportunity to come in and bring, bring funds into Wall Street. 90% of women say they want to have a social impact. 77% of women globally, according to the Center for Talent Innovation, want to invest in companies with diverse leadership teams. So if they're going to put their money to work, they want to get a fair return, a good return, and they also want to put it to work in companies that they feel good about. So these two things to me are really two big ideas, and the two big ideas came together for me in this fund. Let's talk about some of your most successful posts. Okay. And you know where this road is going. <laughs> being fired. You have written a number of times about being fired. They are, people love being fired. People love it. People, no, people don't love being fired. People love reading about me being fired. They, I think that there is a, there is a desire to everyone, most people, so many people have gone through this, this kind of uh, traumatic experience of it, and they want to bury it. They don't want to talk about it. You're very open about talking about it. Number one, why are you so open? How, how are you so open about it? And two, what do you get out of the experience of, of being open? Well, you know, for, 
first of all, it's a little hard to miss. I mean, if you get fired, it's on the front page of the newspaper. You know, it's a little bit hard to go home and say, boy, I hope, I hope nobody saw that, <laughs> right. you know. So you sort of have this very odd freedom of it being out there. Um, so I think that, you know, first of all, it, look, this is life. The second thing, what I am, I, it almost, it's, it, well, it's obviously hard to talk about because it is this, people sort of hide in the sense of shame, but it, it's happening increasingly with the pace of, of change in business, with the cycles we've been through. You know, I think I've written in the past that if it, it doesn't happen to you, you, at some point, you know, not this year, not next year, but 10 years as the pace of change continues to increase, were you even trying hard enough, right? You know, were you taking enough risks if you didn't do something that sort of got you crosswise someplace? We're not there yet, but to try to pull away this sense of shame, much as, by the way, Silicon Valley is doing for failure. The idea of I started a company, it failed, move on. On the East Coast, through the rest of the country, I don't think we yet have enough of a sense of I failed, there you have it, you know, next step. Do you manage differently because of it? I think I manage differently all the time because of everything. You know, as a manager and a business person, I, for me, it's all about lifelong learning. I mean, there's the joy of the job, but part of that is, is one continues to learn. I've learned, I learned a lot from all these experiences. And so you change it every, every step along the way. But it sure, it can make you more empathetic. I mean, just, you, you know, you have these bumps in the road and it's easier to sort of pull, put yourself on the other side because you've been on that other side of the table to say, okay, you know, rather than be a jerk about this, you know, recognize there's some real emotion here. Do you push your people to take more risks? I, I'd much rather hire someone you have to pull back than push forward, and so I really look for that. And I love a, a vibrant debate. Um, in fact, I, I remember when I was running Merrill, having a meeting with my team and said, we just haven't yelled at each other enough. And, you know, we, you don't want the workplace to be unpleasant, but until we are really so engaged and involved and so passionate about what we're doing and yelling at each other, then I'm not sure we're playing the game hard enough. Um, so I don't mind a, you know, a very emotional and vibrant workplace. Now, the rule is when you're a leadership team, after you yell at each other, then you make a decision and by the time you leave the room, that team has got to be rock solid together. I mean, none of this you know, we made that decision, but I'm, you know, now well, let's wait and see what happens with this. But you gotta, you gotta be together as a team. That's great. Sally, thank you very much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you.